If you have spent any time browsing the numerous best games of all time lists, you will struggle not to find The Witcher 3 high amongst them. It has an almost ubiquitous presence amongst the highest esteemed category of games, boasting high 9 to 10 out of 10 scores on review websites. Every minute element of this game is praised with very little critique or criticism displayed, if any at all. To the layperson simply hearing of the game from word of the masses, they would conclude that this is an ever-elusive experience, a perfect game, a masterpiece. So when Steam blessed us yet again with another massive sale and the extra time received during the pandemic, I wanted to really sit down and immerse myself with the world that I had heard tales of. What I left with was a single thought. Wow, that was really bad. It's not to say that the game itself isn't a well-made and designed game. It clearly has a story that resonates with people. Unless this is some sort of 1984 conspiracy created by CDPR to coerce the masses into pure praise, I felt like I was missing something. So when I asked around to a few of my friends who are massive Witcher fans, I asked plainly, what draws you to the game? And I got some varied answers which led to more confusion and frustration on my part. Some replied that the deep combat and hunting was what kept them enticed. Others replied, the mechanics may as well not have been there because the story was the only thing keeping them engaged. It troubled me that there was no singular prime element for what made people go bonkers over anything with The Witcher on it. When I consider most games that are highly acclaimed, it's often because they have a few key elements that are bound together to create a cohesive and full experience. A quick search of the best games of all time results in famous titles like Grand Theft Auto V, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Skyrim, Bioshock, and The Last of Us. These titles are a combination of traditional elements of story, atmosphere, and mechanics, which are seamlessly blended together for an experience like none other in the market. They all sell an exciting or interesting idea for the player to dive into and fulfill on that promise. Bioshock could be explained briefly as, you play as a weary traveler who goes to an underwater dystopia and must find the truth behind its collapse. Skyrim is summarized by you are a dragonborn warrior who must traverse through a fantasy Scandinavia completing quests and attaining strength to defeat a dragon who is destined to destroy the world. I can't do the same thing for The Witcher 3, at least in my head. I feel that The Witcher as a game has an identity crisis. It can't decide what it wants to give the player. It has elements of being a power fantasy, with Geralt seemingly able to cleave through massive enemies and mechanics giving him an astounding amount of ammunition for the user to toy and play around with. At the same time, Geralt is a weak, scrawny, homeless person who has no knowledge of how the monsters that he's employed to fight actually work, and makes its gritty, hyper-realistic drudge fest an annoying and frustrating experience. I intend to speak specifically about my reasoning for this idea throughout the rest of this video, but I do not intend to spoil much, if any, of the plot as I have not completed the game. According to Steam, I've poured about 32 hours into this world trying to get the experience and whatever fun part of the game was there, but despite my best efforts, I did not find it, and I definitely do not intend to go back and look anymore. 30 plus hours should be plenty of time for a game to hook me, that is longer than some games entirely, so if you still believe that I should have put more hours into this unfun experience, take these criticisms as exclusively for the early game and my experience. It is a common theme of open world games to have large and expansive worlds that are marketed as somewhere which you can explore and delve into. That being the case, many games fall into the pile of open world experiences that are frankly barren with nothing to do within beside the main cities and wherever your current objective is. I don't equate The Witcher 3 with having this problem. In fact, I feel it's the opposite. CDPR crafted a very realistic and beautiful world, one with different paths, small and large towns, an assortment of biomes to explore with different enemies and difficulties. I will never fault The Witcher for having a poor world design. What I do get frustrated at is the fact that I don't get to experience most of it, or at least I don't feel like I want to. I'm a player who likes to go from objective to objective and explore when there is something that catches my interest or nothing else to do. Because of the insane amount of things to do within an open world game, I often forego the main quest line entirely to complete any and all side quests, missions, or challenges before returning to the main quest. This is often because exploring like this prevents me from potentially ruining the flow of narrative later on. There is often a large amount of dead exploration time devoted to reaching a new area or power threshold between story quests that I prefer to keep everything cohesive. 
Another benefit of playing this way is that you get to locate and activate fast travel points around the world, once again allowing for less downtime from traveling from area to area. This leads to me really disliking the signpost fast traveling system. The general structure of the game not meshing with how I like to complete all the side quests before proceeding is fine, but one thing in games that aggravates me more than it probably should is needlessly backtracking to the same areas I have been to for small activities. The signpost that you travel to in order for you to travel somewhere seems entirely unnecessary. I don't see why CDPR didn't just expedite the entire process to only have you travel from anywhere to a signpost or location you have already been to. I know Rasputin might have his blood boiling at that assertion, but The Witcher 3 doesn't have anything interesting to do whilst traveling. I would rather just get to my location and ignore the tedium of mindlessly trekking through the woods for minutes on end so I can get to where I want to go. This system in combination with its traveling mechanics breaks the gameplay flow and pacing significantly. I could not even see a but it's realistic argument being applicable here because it is equally as realistic for Geralt to travel off screen from a signpost to another random signpost in the world as it is for a player to travel from some random location in the forest to reach a signpost in the world. Yes, fast traveling is a band-aid for a less than stellar travel mechanic, but if it's already a quick fix, just make the entire system easier to use. One of the largest issues that plagues The Witcher in my eyes is the awful use of Roach and everything that surrounds it. Mounts are still apparently an issue that game devs have not yet overcome. Mounts are often sluggish and buggy with poor handling overall, and Roach is no different. Whatever sort of pathfinding the AI uses to choose whether Roach will gallop through the slightly narrow area or get entirely sidetracked and turned around makes utilizing Roach off-road and in combat an unnecessary risk. Clearly CDPR knew this was an issue with Roach's handling and added an auto movement function when you were on the pre-made trails throughout the world. Along with this free movement, the waypoint system shown in the minimap displays the fastest route using the roads to reach wherever destination you were heading towards. One would think that if CDPR already took the time to calculate the direction to a destination, the autopilot function of Roach would follow the same route, right? No, for some reason Roach always takes the closest pathway in front of it regardless of your current destination. People always compliment the beautiful world and graphics of The Witcher 3. I even did so earlier in the video. Alongside that, a large part of what makes the world of The Witcher feel real is the random encounters you may stumble upon during your travels. The fact is that I rarely get to see any of it because I'm staring at the minimap looking for forks in the road that might send me barreling down an area in an opposite direction to which I was going. I always need to be doing calculations to determine if I need to veer Roach in a direction or if I'm just not going to move at all because if I were to overcorrect that will just mean Roach will go off trail or possibly down another route repeating this process ad nauseum for my entire trek. Because it is infuriating to pilot Roach, the autopilot function should have at least worked as intended, but it is arguably less efficient than gambling occasionally on random stutters Roach may have while traversing through the wilderness. I mentioned earlier how bad Roach handled in the wild and during combat, so I feel I should elaborate. I don't understand why horseback combat is so much more powerful than regular combat. Is it the momentum added to the swing of the blade by the fast moving horse? If that's the case, then why does it do the same amount of damage when the horse is stationary? Maybe it's a historical reason that's replicating reality, yet I don't feel more powerful on horseback. When I do a combo on the ground, the leaps and cleaves Geralt makes makes it seem like I'm actually hitting something with energy. In contrast, the small swipes Geralt does leaning off the side of Roach look frail and weak. Again, if this is a historic representation, then the numbers are fine but at least make the animation seem more powerful. If this is just a balancing mechanic, I believe that instead of upping the damage done by the attacks, they should have at least made them hit more consistently. I wouldn't be as mad about the horseback combat if they had at least let me live the fantasy of dashing up to an enemy and quickly and precisely cleaving their heads off. This fantasy is shattered when we return to the god-awful handling of Roach and the 50-50 split of which side Geralt will choose to attack off of. Despite these downsides, if you are in an open enough space to prevent the handling disaster of Roach, 
Horseback combat is by far the most optimal way to defeat any enemy with the exception of those that are only weak to signs. Your damage and evasion is so high that it outclasses traditional combat in all senses. Let me remind you, I spent the last few minutes just explaining how bad Roach is to handle, so imagine how annoying it is that the most optimal way to play the game is to engage and utilize the horrible mount system. CDBR tried to balance this aspect of gameplay with Roach's fear meter. This bar increases in the presence of danger and if it gets to the maximum, Roach will kick Geralt off and throw a fit. The problem is that the meter goes down so quickly that it's very easy to just kite enemies with crossbow shots while you wait for it to recharge then dive back into it with some sword swipes. Repeating this process ad nauseum leads to a higher damage and safer gameplay than regular grounded fighting, which is arguably more frustrating than this tedious process of trampling enemies with roach. If I could sum up all of The Witcher 3's combat with one word, it would be inconsistent. I almost feel as if the entirety of combat is RNG based from all the random errors a seasoned hunter like Geralt makes. Geralt misses his crossbow shots on enemies around 15 feet arbitrarily. Enemies randomly don't stagger on the same hits that I did to their cohorts. They sometimes don't get inflicted by status effects from signs that their peers were affected by even if they were standing equidistant from each other. They can occasionally just transition with no indication from staggered to attacking which leaves no window for me to dodge out of the way. They can use powerful diving moves that if I don't dodge could easily one shot me but don't have enough end lag for me to counter attack because Geralt is too slow to reach them in time. All of these frustrating things and more can stack on top of each other creating scenarios that can severely injure or even kill me. I don't know why these things happen, but it makes combat with even the simplest of monsters too dangerous of an affair for me to want to do. Maybe that's in character with Geralt, only hunting and killing monsters because that is his income and duty as a witcher. If that's what we're going towards, a gritty and grueling world, that's amazing. But with that in mind, explain to me why the combat in certain scenarios is so goddamn easy that it could literally be done blindfolded. The issue with trying to make a character like Geralt constantly have to overcome challenges that are larger than him is that it completely discounts the idea of growth or player knowledge. In Horizon Zero Dawn, you hunt these giant mechanical beasts and learn their weaknesses by scanning it. No longer is it a blind fight against something I have no idea how to defeat when I engage it, leading to me having to throw myself at it until it dies so I learn how to dispatch them appropriately later. I just know what to do for the still difficult encounter and can prepare more appropriately for subsequent fights. I don't see why the Witcher doesn't do this. Geralt is a veteran monster hunter, he has demonstrated consistently his knowledge of the accursed beings around the world, so why doesn't he implicitly know the weaknesses of monsters before engaging in battle? They could have even done a weakness checking action by using your Witcher sense on an enemy to scan for weak points and methods of attack. Of course, I'm not implying that the player should be granted all the information about anything at the press of a button, but allowing for the player to build up a portfolio of weaknesses and tendencies of monsters that could be an awesome way to entice players to actively hunt and find their favorite and most efficient ways to kill. Unfortunately for that pipe dream, CDPR had to have added more than just a few weaknesses to enemies and to also implement more ways to kill monsters, which in my opinion is the core of the problem. When monsters generally only have 1-3 to three weaknesses, that leads to really stagnant play. This is compounded by the fact that your go-to for most monsters is just whichever corresponding sign you need to use and all the rest of the items and oils are just in case the fight is too hard or you just happen to have them on hand. When there is only one way of realistically killing something, you know that's the only thing players are going to use, right? Ghosts are weak to Yerden, and thus I will only use Yerden if I am fighting a ghost. There isn't any room for creativity or strategy, it all devolves into a static check of whether or not you are using the right signs or materials. If you are, the fight is trivial and easy. If you aren't, that's going to be a slog and it's occasionally impossible. In a game like Dark Souls, where the entire point of combat is to understand telegraphs and dodge accordingly, the Witcher's mechanics don't support that type of gameplay. Instead, it forces you to use specific signs, oils, and items to defeat monsters more efficiently, but even if I am prepared with the correct signs and materials, I'm still fearful of the fights because of some unknown variable that might interrupt my plan by not staggering an enemy appropriately or not afflicting them with a status condition leading to my demise.
Maybe I'm in the minority with this, but I like consistency in my games. Having some sort of extra system that allows the players to guarantee their effects will work could have even been a solution here. Noting that hitting enemies some X times within a short period will guarantee a stagger or monsters cannot be set alight when under Y health because they are bloodied and thus wet. Any option could have been done to ensure that the players weren't cheated out of their success. I never felt accomplished and rewarded for my victories, which, regardless of whether or not that's on theme, would have been a nice addition. I'm sure Geralt feels proud when he takes down a massive creature of the swamp, even if he doesn't show it. I am so frustrated about this because there is no way to scope out the difficulty of a monster or upcoming fight until you're down in the mud scrapping with the thing. There is a no in-between when it comes to these fights, it's either that you guessed correctly and eviscerated it, or lost horribly and gruesomely. You can't skill your way out of these encounters, with the exception of roach-based combat. This combat system breaks under even the slightest amount of pressure, and the excuse of it being a gritty and realistic game is a band-aid for a severely wounded game design. The unpolished and awkward game mechanics compile on top of each other to create a sloppy and frustrating game loop if there even is one. To this date, I still can't determine what the point of this game is. What is The Witcher 3 about? What am I supposed to look forward to? Games shouldn't have me questioning why I am playing them. Is Geralt a seasoned hunter able to dispatch a variety of monsters, or is he a frail leaf that could be blown away by an errant gust of wind? So I had to wonder. The combat cannot be the reason for the universal praise this game gets, so it has to be something else. The story, the world that you can get immersed in, now, now that I think about it, what is the name of the world? If I don't care about the world, characters, or plotline of The Witcher, is there really a reason for me to play it? I have yet to play a game where I can truly say that the story makes the game worse. Now, this section of the video is very much a matter of personal taste with my own brief experience with the story. I haven't and don't intend to engage with the seven books, three comic series, and two previous games to try and possibly find some interest within the narrative. I don't care enough to. For some of you, I know personally a few of my friends who have mentioned that the world and story that links across games is the reason they love the series so much. In their cases, I'm more than happy for them, I will acknowledge the possibility that there is some depth and interesting lore to dive into when given the entire literary collection of information, but I highly doubt that over 40 million people who have played this game engaged with all that content, much less so when the previous entry in the series only sold 7 million copies, and the first game sold only 1 million. Based on this, I can't reasonably say that this is a case of me being ignorant to the overarching storyline, so I am going to be judging what I experienced of this narrative based on the profile of someone with little to no knowledge of the world or series because logically, that's where most people started. I have over 32 hours in this game and I can tell you for certain I don't feel like anything has happened. I have only gotten more confused, frustrated, and distant from the characters as time went on. I felt especially outcast from being able to act as Geralt when the characters began to reference information from previous games and events that I had yet to experience. I did not know what a Witcher was, why Geralt had powers, anything, and yet there was no time devoted to catching an ignorant player like myself up. This is not helped by the way gameplay and story coincide to tell a very long-term and segmented storyline. Often in between sessions of play, I forgot what I was doing, who I was supposed to be helping, along with my previous decisions and experiences because they would happen so distant from each other. Pacing in this game in general is annoying and combining that with a complex storyline led to nothing but confusion on the part of the player. In most scenarios, having a confusing plotline doesn't bother me, because they are not as intertwined with the gameplay. I cannot pay attention to some dialogue and choose options at random, which will still lead me to finishing the game appropriately and how I would want to. Of course, there are also games that are focused entirely on their decisions, which I also very much enjoy. I just recently played through Until Dawn with my girlfriend, and never once was I confused at what we were to do. Yes, the options were obscure and you weren't entirely certain what was correct, but it felt fair based on the prompt. In this case, there is never any build-up for an important decision moment. I'm not forewarned that a decision will have major consequences going forward. Combining that with the vague and subjective summarizations given to the player for different decisions just adds to the detached feeling from the game I already had. If I'm not in control of what I say and how I say it, 
I might as well not be there and let the dialogue just go randomly. One of these cases of vague dialogue descriptions led to Kara's death, which entirely broke any attachment to the game I could have had because that was one of the only scenarios where I understood the connection Geralt had to a character. Or at least, I thought I did, because I was forced to fight her to the death over something entirely trivial. I am not saying that the story of The Witcher is bad. In fact, I was very enticed and enjoyed my time with the Netflix series as it aired. I just think that the delivery of the plot within the game was lackadaisical. In 32 plus hours of gameplay, I should have been able to get excited for something, but I wasn't. Nothing was exciting. I knew that I was looking for Siri and was too weak to do anything else, but I gave this game over a day of my time and I couldn't tell you the first thing about any character that I didn't learn from the show. That being said, the gameplay outside of combat is the only aspect of the game that could have any merit left to it. Maybe it's not the story of the game itself, but it's the way that the story was presented utilizing the world and atmosphere. Experiencing a truly living and realistic world is a tagline that is still interesting to people today. But you can all see how much time is left in this video, I'll just get on with it. It feels like CDPR went into this project with the intention of creating a realistic and gritty depiction of a medieval times world helmed by a flawed warrior who has to fight monsters. Then realize that reality is boring and hard to balance so they added a bunch of mechanics that aren't realistic but helpful then somewhere halfway through development realized that these mechanics could go against their primary statement of being a realistic game so they just made them as tedious as possible and claimed that they were realistic. I know that's a really roundabout way of saying that every mechanic in this game is slow and cumbersome and a waste of time, but I like my reasoning better. It explains why you have a carry capacity but also can use infinite crossbow shots, but I digress. Objection! No I don't, why in the ever loving shit do people add carry capacities to games? There is no reason for them and I know people know this. If you have a carry capacity, you have to always make sure there is a reason for it. Throwing one into a game with no reason for it to be there is always a waste of development time and a headache for the players. It isn't realistic for someone to carry hundreds of small items along with his weapons and armor. Putting a number at the top of the screen that says this is how much your character can carry is pointless unless that number is exceptionally low where in that case inventory management becomes a part of the core mechanics of the game and the devs balance intentionally around you not having access to countless items. Resident Evil is a game where you can't carry an arsenal on your back and it makes sense, but in The Witcher your carry capacity is significantly more than any man, even with superpowers and his horse's saddlebags, could feasibly move. Removing this mechanic is nothing but an improvement and it's a shame games still do this to this day. And like Legos in a building of infuriation, the UI system to manage all these useless and cluttered items is horrid. I could genuinely make an entire video on the unappealing visuals of these screens, but I'll keep it relatively short. Every one of the random items you pick up are crammed into the tiniest of PNG icons that make the entire inventory system unusable. They kept this trend going when it comes to the rest of the menu screens by cramming as much stuff into the smallest spaces leading to illegibility and a ton of user error. It may as well all be text based just with the names of the items because regardless of which system is used, I will still have to scroll through the entire section of objects to find something that I am looking for. I know this isn't entirely about the realism of the world, but come on. This bipolar view of realism in the game clearly leads to awful and unfun mechanics. Much like carry capacity, I don't know anyone who smiles and is happy about having their weapon and armor lose its durability. I can't blame them for not being happy. The process of having to regenerate the sword involves interacting with the rest of the game's awful systems, which takes time and adds to tedium of whatever they were doing. It's a complete flow ruiner, and again, removal of this function would be nothing but a positive. They even made healing in the game the worst thing to interact with. I'm not saying that they have to go all Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild style where Geralt can carry around 8 months of food in his back pocket to consume on a whim, but something better to heal yourself in a tough fight would have also been nice. Things in combat don't heal much which sure adds to difficulty but also makes the already shitty combat mechanics even more punishing when you can't resort to item use to remedy a mistake made by the game. What's even worse is that obtaining items to craft potions and the like are often random and annoying. 
I wish there was a way to find out specific locations of herbs rather than them being randomly scattered throughout the world. It is such a drag to prance through the plains and forest in search of items for the potions that I would often just not engage with that side of the game at all. I picked up every item I saw, but I could never craft anything relevant. I'm not sure what type of solution I could suggest because I spent so little time with that area of the game as soon as I figured out that it was all randomly assorted throughout the world. It may be as simple as giving Geralt a diagram of common locations certain herbs spawn more commonly to prevent people from randomly hunting around. Frankly, the notion of realistically foraging in my action role-playing game doesn't sit well with me. I would rather this system be overhauled entirely as any solution I can come up with doesn't make me excited to go picking berries as a mutant monster hunter. Talking slightly more about the world design, I enjoy the concept of a quest board and I also find that random encounter quest to be really engaging and promote the idea of a realistic and alive world without being burdensome, but what I don't understand is why you can accept and track quests that are several magnitudes of difficulty harder than anything you could possibly deal with. I was level 6 or 7 and found a notice board. I accepted every quest on it because not 30 minutes ago, the game mentioned that I would have to do side quests to earn experience and money to continue with the storyline. So I tracked the first one that it gave me the option to, and it led me down into a pit with level 30 and Drago Warriors and Queens. This is a fight that is extremely lethal and entirely impossible for someone at my current level, and there was no indication until I sprinted my way out of the cave and looked at the quest to see that this was a quest intended for level 33 adventurers. I know this isn't an entirely fair argument because I could have just looked at the quest at any time and saw its level of difficulty, but I also feel that it should have been told to me or been completely impossible for me to take at the time. In fact, I feel the latter would be a far better option because these quests don't get done until Geralt does them. It's not like the world will just go through and get rid of this and drag a horde. No, they'll patiently wait until I play enough to get to a level of equipment and items to efficiently take care of that issue. It's just such a weird case of uncanny valley syndrome when it comes to being realistic. The mechanics are almost there, but the issues are so noticeable that you can't help but realize that they are entirely unrealistic. I mentioned earlier that I spent 32 hours playing this game, and I don't think I ever enjoyed it during that time. The build-up to my playing of it was huge, as the entire internet claims this to be one of the best games of all time, but I can't help but feel that there was something I was missing, something that didn't click with me. So that's where the inspiration for me writing out this video came from. For me to logically and analytically go through my dislikes of the game and categorize them in order to find some sort of logical inconsistency within my own thoughts or to rationalize why I had such a violent reaction within this game. Now upon finishing the script and currently editing it, I believe that I can truly say that The Witcher 3 is not a masterpiece. Of course, people are allowed to like games for their own reasons. I was so blown away by the emotion and passion that the people I talked to expressed, but that is more of a reason for me to post this. I'm not trying to invalidate your opinion on the game, rather express a contrary side that I feel goes unnoticed more often than not. Like I did in my Dishonored critique, there is one other note that didn't really fit anywhere else in this video. The music is incredibly annoying most of the time, and it loops on plays on end until you finish whatever task or battle you're currently doing, even when you're in the menus. Of course, my distaste for the music is subjective, but different themes for different enemies would have been a nice touch, because they literally got me angrier when playing this already frustrating mess. Even though I went against the majority of the population with this video, I hope you still found something interesting that came out of it. These types of shorter form content is what I intend to make from now on unless I am really passionate about a project and need to get a lot of thoughts out. I've been really busy with online schooling and work that these videos don't come out that often, but if you're interested in seeing more, you can subscribe to the channel to see my videos when they come out. You can also comment your thoughts in the video and suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching.